Hi, Russ of Aquarimax here. Opaiula shrimp have got to be the lowest maintenance pet I have ever had. But does that mean they're the best pet invertebrate? Well today, after a brief introduction to the species, I'll talk about housing and care, and then go into the pros and cons of keeping Opaiula shrimp so that you can come to your own conclusion. Opaiula shrimp are known by a lot of names. They're known as super shrimp, Hawaiian lava shrimp, Hawaiian red shrimp, and scientifically, they're known as Halo caridina rubra. They're endemic to the Hawaiian Islands, so wild Opaiula shrimp can only be found in Hawaii. Fortunately, there are many captive bred populations elsewhere in the world at this point. Opaiula come from a very interesting, specific environment in the Hawaiian Islands. Since the Hawaiian Islands are volcanic, they're constructed basically of porous rock. That porous rock allows seepage from the ocean as well as from rainfall in and it's stored there. So this mixture of fresh and salt water, called brackish water, is home to these opaiula. They live in these fissures and cracks in the lava rock that makes up the Hawaiian Islands, essentially. They also regularly visit anchialine pools. Anchialine pools are a special type of pool that is connected to these cracks and fissures and by way of those cracks and fissures connected to the ocean. So they actually have a dampened tidal action in those pools. It's not as dramatic as it is in the ocean, but it exists. So the shrimp spend a lot of their time down underground, but they will travel up into the pools to feed. There are a lot more nutrients in the pools. There's algae growing, there are insects falling into these pools and things like that. So they live in that very specific environment, which leads to some very unusual ab adaptations in these shrimp. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later. All right, so that's a really basic introduction to Opaiula. Let's talk a little bit about housing. Now to house uh, shrimp like these, various sizes of containers can be used. I recommend starting out you know, with a one to two gallon enclosure at least. You can go higher, you can do lower, but generally the shrimp will reproduce better if they are in larger containers. I found that a 10 gallon aquarium is ideal if you want your shrimp to reproduce a lot, but they will also reproduce in smaller containers. I have a two gallon container in which they reproduce and so on. So it's kind of up to you, but bigger containers are usually better. On the other hand, this is a great shrimp for really small containers. If you have a gallon bowl and you're not sure what to do with it because there aren't really many creatures that will drive in a one gallon bowl, this is a shrimp that can actually do it. So once you have an aquarium of some type, you'll need a substrate. A great type of substrate to use is something that provides calcium in the form of calcium carbonate to the shrimp. So you can use aragonite sand, which is intended for use with marine aquaria. You can use a, an African rift lake cichlid buffering substrate. That works great as well. Um, you can even use aquarium gravel, but then you'll need to add some crushed coral or something like that to uh, help buffer the pH. Or you could use calcium carbonate rock in uh, the aquarium as well something of that nature. I have used aragonite sand, I've used aquarium sand uh, just for a freshwater tank and that works as well, and I have also used the cichlid buffering substrate. I'll put links to some of those in the description. So once you have the substrate, you don't need a lot, maybe about half an inch or so, and that's kind of up to you exactly how much you use. Then you may want some decor. Now decor is not 100% necessary, but it looks nice, and since these shrimp come from cracks and fissures in lava. I like to use lava rock and so do a lot of other Opaiula keepers. You can buy landscape lava rock and put that in piles in your aquarium. You can get slightly bigger pieces and do more of an aquascape. That's kind of up to you. The shrimp do like to hide in the cracks and crevices between the uh, pieces of lava. How much exactly you use is up to you. Some people put, you know, three quarters of their tank is full of the lava and then they just leave an open space for the shrimp to swim and some people use a lot less. I kind of go somewhere in the middle. You can also use other aquarium safe items for decor as well. For now, let's hold off on live plants. We'll talk a little bit more about that later, but uh, aquarium safe plastic plants are fine if you want or other aquarium safe decorations uh, work pretty well. I would not advise to use things like live rock from marine and aquarium because most of the organisms on that will die off in the lower salinity that you'll have and we'll talk more about salinity in just a minute. 
but any aquarium safe decoration in general is safe for the shrimp, especially if it offers them a place to hide. So now let's talk about the water that the Opaiula need. As I mentioned, they need a mixture of fresh and salt water. They can survive for a short time in full fresh water, but they won't really breed in it and won't live very long. They can survive at full marine strength uh, seawater, but they won't really breed in it. They can even survive at salinities higher than ocean water, but they won't breed in that either. So it's important to find a balance. 50% um, marine strength, in other words, full seawater diluted by half with fresh water, seems to be a really good salinity for them. They will breed at other salinities, but that's an easy one to uh, make up, and it is easy to remember, it, and it works great. They, they thrive and reproduce at that salinity. So you'll need some marine salt, not aquarium salt intended for fresh water, not rock salt, not anything like that. You'll need marine salt that is intended for making up uh, salt water for a marine aquarium. And then make it up at half the strength. And different packages have slightly different mixes. There's a popular one that requires about half a cup of the marine salt per gallon of water. So you'd put in one quarter of a cup per gallon of water, for example, for Opaiula. But check the package directions and then just dilute that with an equal part of fresh water. Um, and then you'll be fine. Exact numbers are really not important. The shrimp are pretty adaptable. So if yours is a little higher, a little lower, it's not going to matter at all. So once you have the water made up, you should use, uh, by the way, distilled water or um, reverse osmosis water. Don't use tap water. You can use dechlorinated tap water, but it's just safer to use distilled water for several reasons. And uh, any kind of chlorine in the water, of course, will kill them. So at least dechlorinate the water, but distilled or uh, reverse osmosis water are better. Now, once you have mixed that up and everything is in the tank, now comes the most difficult, perhaps, part of preparing for and owning Opaiula shrimp, is you need to let it cycle. This is not cycling in the same way that you would do with a marine or freshwater aquarium with a filter. You don't need a filter for this shrimp. So let me pause for a second and reiterate that. They don't need filtration beyond the natural biological filtration that will occur in the aquarium when it's properly set up. As far as temperature goes, they do not need a heater as long as you have reasonable room temperatures. If your temperature is above 50 Fahrenheit and it's below 85 Fahrenheit, your temperature is probably fine. And they don't need any additional aeration or anything like that. Now, is it possible to keep them with filtration, aeration, heating? Yes but generally not necessary, but generally not necessary. And so now back to cycling. Once you've added the decor and the substrate and the water at 50% marine salinity, you just have to kind of let it sit. And as you let it sit, eventually algae will come and grow, uh, start growing on the glass and on the decor and so on, as long as there's enough light. Ambient light is usually enough for these shrimp. If you like, you can use an aquarium light. You don't want necessarily something extremely bright because that will just encourage excess algae growth but a little bit of light uh, is fine I have a 5.5 gallon aquarium for example that came with a an LED light and then I added a, a smaller light strip into there that works fine um, generally low to medium aquarium light will be great for Opaiula and then you'll want to put it on a cycle so it's on for about 12 hours and off for about 12 hours I highly recommend a timer just to make that easier. And if you don't use a light at all, ambient light will be fine in most cases unless you're in a really dark space. So once you've let the tank sit for several weeks, it usually takes three, four, six weeks, something like that, and you see algae starting to grow, you know it's ready for the shrimp. There are a few things that can speed that up, and we'll talk more about that when we talk about tank mates and other species that can be kept with Opaiula. So now you need a source of Opaiula. Well, one great source for Opaiula is PetShrimp.com. Uh, Mustafa at PetShrimp.com sells Opaiula shrimp in commercial quantities, but they are all captive bred. There are other sources, some of which provide captive bred shrimp and others which do not. I highly recommend getting captive bred shrimp, of course, for the welfare of the wild shrimp, as well as the fact that they will be um, well adapted and you'll probably pay less in shipping and things like that. The shrimp themselves might be a little bit more expensive captive bred, but they're worth it. 
I should stop for a second and mention how many shrimp you should start with. If you're starting with a gallon aquarium, I would recommend starting with 10 to 15, two gallon aquarium, maybe 20 to 30. If you're starting with a larger aquarium, you really ought to get a, a fairly large number, maybe 50 or so in a five gallon aquarium, um, maybe 75 in a 10 gallon, something like that. If you don't, you just won't see very many of them for a while. Once you have your shrimp, um, acclimating them is pretty easy. Uh, make sure that, that there's not a lot of temperature variation. Let them sit uh, near or in the tank floating in a bag until the temperature is the same and then you can just release them. They're not particularly sensitive. Uh, drip acclimation is not really necessary with these shrimp in general. They may be very pale when they arrive and that's pretty normal. They uh, tend to change color based on uh, things like light that they're receiving, based on stress and other factors. So if they look a little pale when you get them, don't worry about it. They should darken up later. Now that you have the shrimp in the aquarium, now what do you do? Well, let's talk about care. Care is extremely simple for these shrimp. One of the most difficult things to realize is that you should not feed the shrimp right away, nor should you feed the shrimp for maybe one or two months. You might even need to go longer than that. The reason why is not because I want you to starve your shrimp. It's because these shrimp are used to living in the underground environments where they're really not eating a lot. Their metabolisms work differently from shrimp you may be used to. If you've kept red cherry shrimp or other neocarotidina shrimp or similar shrimp, those shrimp eat a lot more. These shrimp really don't need a lot of food and they also will suffer if you overfeed them, which is very easy to do. So I highly recommend you not feed them for a month or two after you get them, um, maybe even longer. If there's algae in the aquarium, as Mustafa at PetShrimp.com says, then there's enough food for the shrimp. They're going to be grazing on algae and bacterial film and so on in your aquarium, not a big problem. So you probably could go longer without feeding them. In fact, uh, when I set up my 10 gallon, I didn't feed the 75, or so shrimp in there for approximately six months. And I knew it was time to feed them when I saw little larvae floating in the water. So um, you really don't need to feed them very often because they're going to find enough food in general. But once they get going and you notice that they're breeding and whatnot, you can start feeding them, but you only want to feed them maybe once or twice a month and maybe as often as once a week if you're feeding very, very small amounts of food. But for my 10 gallon tank with several hundred shrimp in it, put one small uh, fish food pellet, a sinking fish food pellet, and that is enough for at least a month. Really, don't overdo feeding. The other major item to keep in mind when you're thinking about care of opaiula is topping off evaporated water. You're going to need to add distilled or RO water to your aquarium as water evaporates. Now, if you have a cover on your aquarium, which I do recommend, this is going to slow the evaporative process and so you won't have to top off water as often. If you don't have a lid, you're going to need to do it more often. But either way, use distilled or reverse osmosis water to top off. You don't want to put any salt in that because the salts are not going to evaporate as the water does, of course, just like in a marine aquarium. And so if you're adding saline water all the time, you're going to increase the salinity every time you add water and you don't want to do that. So just uh, top off once a week, once a month, whatever works for you, depending on your particular setup. And those are the two main things you need to be concerned about with care. Now, some of you are probably asking, what about water changes? Uh, I change water in my aquarium all the time. You know, I do weekly water changes of 25% or whatever. I am a great believer in partial frequent water changes for most aquaria, but with these shrimp, it's simply not necessary. I'm just going to take a minute to point out that Mustafa at PetShrimp.com has a lot of greater information on these shrimp. I think I've mentioned his website before already, but you really ought to go check out the information that he has there. I've been keeping these shrimp myself since 2004, 2005, something like that, and did so successfully for several years before I found his website. But once I found his website, it became easier and even more successful. My shrimp were breeding more regularly and uh, it was easier to do it. So his method is great. That's the method I use and a lot of Opaiula keepers use his method with great success. It's extremely easy. So I highly recommend you check that out and I will put a link down to that in the description. So now you've got the two main items of care 
down, feeding, which should be infrequent and very, very small quantities of food, and then the topping off with distilled or, or reverse osmosis water. Let's talk about breeding. If you're taking care of your shrimp and you're not overfeeding them, the shrimp will tend to breed. They breed in much the same way as other aquarium shrimp. The female will be buried, meaning you'll see a lot of little eggs that she carries on her underside, and those eggs will eventually hatch. The, there are some differences with breeding with other shrimp. One of them is that these shrimp do not breed as frequently, as prolifically as most Neocaridina shrimp do. They, they do breed, but not nearly as fast. They don't usually produce as many young at a time, and they, it's just a lot slower in terms of the process. Like I mentioned, they have slower uh, metabolism, so their breeding is going to be slower too. So, once you see a female carrying eggs under her body, she's buried, then it'll be a couple of months, if all goes well, and if you keep the water quality high by not overfeeding, she should release um, larvae in about two months after the eggs are laid. Now, a difference between Opaiula shrimp and Neocaridina shrimp is that the shrimp larvae are actually larvae in, in the case of Opaiula. They do not have walking legs yet. They float in the water, head down, tail up, and they, they have little um, swimming structures instead of legs. So they'll slowly kind of zip around like little planktonic shrimp, essentially, is what they are. And they will do that for a couple of weeks before metamorphosing into tiny pale replicas of the adults. And then they will start uh, being benthic. In other words, they will crawl around on the bottom and on the glass and things like that. So one nice thing is that they're not going to overcrowd. They don't breed extremely fast and they, they tend not to reproduce past the capacity of their container and the amount of food they're getting but you'll be amazed at how many shrimp can fit into your aquarium. Uh, a one gallon aquarium could easily house more than 50 shrimp, no problem, uh, because they are smaller than Neocaridina shrimp, uh, and they also have low metabolism. So the bio load that they produce, if you're taking good care of them and not overfeeding, is very, very low. So in my 10 gallon tank, I've had hundreds, hundreds of shrimp at a time, and they're almost constantly breeding, but at a very low rate. So I might look in there and see um, 10, 20, 30 babies floating at the top. And uh, that's a fairly common occurrence, but it's not like I'm being overrun with shrimp. So that about covers breeding. You don't need to feed the larvae differently. They have yolk sacs and they will be fine until they metamorphose. They don't need to be fed. They're, the adults are not going to um, attack them or eat them, so you don't need to worry about that at all. Extremely easy. So those are really the basic tenets of care. There's a little bit more uh, information out there, but that's, those are really the basics. And if you want, as I mentioned, check out mustafaspetshrimp.com for some more information on that. So let's talk about the pros of keeping Opaiula shrimp. Now, the first one is that they are so extremely easy and low maintenance. These are the perfect pet for a classroom or an office or any other situation where they're not going to get a lot of care because honestly, they really don't need it. If you know you're gonna be gone for a week, two weeks, a month, you really don't need to worry. They will be fine if, you're, if the water evaporates a little during that time, just top it off when you get back. The fact that they weren't fed doesn't matter because they will have been eating from the algae and biofilm and so on, they'll be fine. So, they are probably, as I mentioned, the lowest maintenance pet you can possibly get. I think that is a great advantage of this species. In fact, if you've ever heard of those sealed enclosures in which shrimp survive for years without ever opening it to put in food or oxygen or anything, this is that species. I don't recommend that kind of enclosure because they don't really thrive or breed in those enclosures typically, but they are capable of surviving some pretty adverse conditions because of their adaptations to living underground in the, uh, basically, uh, the brackish caves that they inhabit in the wild. The next advantage to keeping Opaiula is their activity level. These shrimp are active 24-7. Now, every individual shrimp might not be active at every second, but a large number of the shrimp are always going to be out foraging and so on, as long as you have a large enough number of shrimp uh, to view. If you initially put in a very, very small number into a larger aquarium, you might not see a lot for a while until the shrimp sort of relax and they start reproducing, then you'll see a lot more activity. But uh, once, once the tank is well established, there's always going to be something going on. And their antics are pretty interesting. They do a lot of uh, 
fun things to watch. The shrimp are also pretty colorful. I mean, if they're kept in ideal conditions, they can be a very, very rich red, and it depends on the particular population of shrimp that yours are descended from, the kinds of foods you're giving them, that kind of thing. It is a good idea to give them foods uh, like spirulina that contain spirulina or astaxanthin or, or things like that that can help maintain their colors. Uh, but good lighting can help with that, dark substrate can help with that, that kind of thing. But they tend to be pretty colorful. An advantage of these shrimp is that you don't have to worry about them overcrowding whatever aquarium you put them in. Just if you're feeding them appropriately, they're not going to breed past the point that they can't uh, support themselves in the aquarium. So not an issue there. The individual shrimp themselves are also extraordinarily long lived. There are documented cases of individual shrimp surviving more, well over 20 years. Pretty unusual for a shrimp. And so if you set up a, a colony of Opaiula, you can fully expect, as long as you keep them properly, to have them for decades, probably your whole life. Now, as with any pet, there are a few cons to owning Opaiula. I would say that they boil down to basically these two. One is that there's always a temptation to put tank mates in with them, but there are relatively few species that can exist in the specialized environment that Opaiula can thrive in. There are a couple of reasons for that. One is because they do have such low metabolic needs that most other organisms you put in with them are going to have higher metabolisms and therefore you run into a problem where if you're feeding the other organisms enough, you're feeding the Opaiula too much and that's going to cause problems and you may need to think about filtration and all those sorts of things which Opaiula themselves don't need. So uh, there are a couple of exceptions to that. One of them is the Malaysian trumpet snail. Interestingly enough, if you think of Malaysian trumpet snails as being the ones that will overpopulate a tank really quickly, the interesting thing is when you put them in a brackish water situation where they're not getting the large amounts of food they might get in another setup, their growth rate and their reproductive rate slow dramatically. And so the, the snails never get as large. They actually, interestingly enough, have much darker shells and they reproduce much, much more slowly. So I put some in my 10 gallon Opaiula tank several years ago, probably three or four years ago, and they've never overcrowded the tank. And they've all come out small, dark, and just not a problem at all. They do help stir up the substrate a little bit very slowly, and they're great tank mates for Opaiula. I should mention here that Malaysian trumpet snails can help you cycle the aquarium before you put the Opaiula into it. Uh, just to give the bacterial colonies kind of a jump start. Put, putting just a few in, maybe for a one gallon tank you could put two or three and then you know upscale accordingly based on uh, the size of your aquarium. Uh, if you put those in there before you put the shrimp in, they will kind of get that cycle going a little bit faster, maybe encourage a little algae growth and then, like I said, they won't overpopulate your aquarium because they're not going to be the nutrients that they might have in an aquarium that you're feeding a lot of food to. So Malaysian trumpet snails work quite well with Opaiula. The only other species that I've really seriously attempted to keep with my Opaiula are uh, various species of nerite, and because they are brackish tolerant, they can survive pretty well as long as there's enough food in the aquarium. Generally, this means I have to rotate them in between different Opaiula tanks because there's just not enough algae to sustain them long term. Uh, the same thing goes for plants. People think, well, I want to try some brackish water plants. There are relatively few plants that do well in these setups. There are a few, and there are some algaes, like some macroalgaes. Um, Mustafa at PetShrimp.com does have some macroalgae cultures and he sells that you can use and put in there. I have a couple of those. There's a a small algae ball, which is not the same as the Marimo moss balls that you buy in an aquarium. Those will die at half strength salinity eventually. And then there's another one that is a little bit like Ketomorpha, if you're familiar with that from uh, marine aquaria, but it's not the same. It's much finer, but it grows in a similar way. He sells that as well. And I have been growing that with good success in my Opaiula tanks. It doesn't attach to uh, the glass. It doesn't attach to the um, lava rock or anything. It just grows in a clump and then you can separate it. Sometimes little strands will float off on their own 
and it grows very well. It seems to be a great tank mate uh, in terms of a, an algae for the Opaula, and it grows quite slowly, so it's very manageable. But a lot of people are just tempted to try to put things like hermit crabs or other creatures in there, and either it's going to be uh, aggressive towards the Opaula, or it's going to eat too much, or something like that. There are very few that work. Another con is that people are worried that they're not doing enough, so they tend to overfeed or, or do too much maintenance on these shrimp. Once you have a cycled aquarium and you put the Opaula in, the best thing to do is just almost leave it alone. Besides the little care that we explained, they will tend to thrive a lot better if they're not disturbed and you're just topping them off and feeding them very small amounts of food fairly infrequently. But people are always tempted to baby them or, or do too much and that's when the problems ensue. The final con I guess I would say is that these shrimp are not as varied as some other types of shrimp. Like in Neocaridina shrimp you can find blue and tangerine and yellow and green and black and white and so many different color varieties. Uh, in these shrimp there are a couple but they're pretty rare and you're just not going to find them uh, as readily as you will with Neocaridina shrimp. So to sum up I've put some links down in the description to get you started if you want to set up your own Opaiula Aquarium. They're an extremely unique and interesting pet to keep. Very, very easy. And I'd like to know what you think. Please let me know in the comments. Are Opaiula the best pet invertebrate? Thanks for watching today. I post videos every Wednesday and Friday, all on aquarium and vivarium pets. Please feel free to rate, share, comment, and if you haven't already, subscribe. And then click the bell icon so you don't miss my next video.